And so the story continues. I was right all along. And now the masses have to accept a painful truth. And that truth is Canelo Alvarez doesn't really want to fight the best. But he's paid the best and has been allowed to do his thing. But at the end of the day, people and their sentiment will realize that he has been robbing them the entire time. Let's talk about it. Haven't I talked about the circus-like atmosphere surrounding the 168-pound division where undisputed champion Saul Canelo Alvarez has kind of settled in. Settled in as a champion, settled in as a high-stakes player in the sport of boxing, and the ultimate businessman when it comes to signing deals to have fights promoted and for him to receive the proceeds on every match that he faces an opponent. Canelo had signed a three fight deal with PBC and the first fight of that deal saw him take on Jamel Charlo, former undisputed 154 pound division champion. In a look toward what might be his second fight, Canelo had eyeballed Charlo's twin brother, Jamal Charlo who has been relatively inactive in the past three years, had one fight in 2023, but didn't look very good. But the thing about it is, Canelo could have fought these two men many years ago when they were all campaigning at 154 pounds. He didn't face them then, because the young lions, as they were known, were hungry. But he was still working on his master plan of how to manipulate various networks and promotional groups to pay him the highest premium they could with him delivering the most minimum of efforts as far as opponents drawn. 
Now, this is not to say his record is falsely built because it's not. But it, what it is to state is that Canelo has always had favor in the boxing world. The sanctioning bodies seemingly allow him to get away with everything they don't let other fighters get away with. And that goes right down to testing positive for performance enhancing Ds. Yeah. So we find him here now, leaving the PBC after one fight on their deal because he could not get the elder, bigger Charlo. Maul is in no condition to fight. And Canelo said, hey, if it's not he, then you won't get a fight out of me. And it's unfortunate because if Charlo were up for the task and had been an active fighter, it would make for a great fight. But then again, he would not have made for a great opponent. You see, Canelo is like a hyena. Hyenas will go in after wounded and injured prey. They don't do a lot of the killing themselves, but they will swarm and take advantage with numbers over that which can barely defend itself and may be on the cusp of expiring. He did this when he won the WBC super middleweight title that was vacant after it was stripped away from former two-time champion David Benavidez. Now, David Benavidez has fought in eliminator bat bouts and he has fought quality opposition, even taking on a nemesis from the 154-pound division of many years ago, Demetrius Andrade, whom Canelo refused to fight and beat Andrade handily. So we are left to wonder, what exactly is it that Canelo wants to do? Does he want to face the best of opposition? Seemingly no. And with he having told us that he represents Mexico, therefore he doesn't fight Mexican fighters. It's interesting now that one name of the Mexican variety has popped up as a potential opponent, that being Jaime Munguia. And Munguia, who has thrived in the sport and have arrived with a record of 43-0 and with 34 KOs, Munguia has shown himself to be an action Jackson-type fighter in there. Munguia will face you and he will get in front of you. He will punch and slug with you, but he's very vulnerable. And at the age of 27, those 43 fights are 43 hard fights because several of those matches, it appeared like Munguia may have been on his way to losing. People can think all the way back to his fight against Dennis Hogan, which was at 154 in April of 2019. It was a nip and tuck battle where he won a majority decision, but many people thought that Hogan fought him to a standstill to at least earn a draw out of that fight. And then he had a rough and tumble battle with Gabe Rosado in November of 2021. He got a unanimous decision out of that after Gabe kind of faded late. But one fight that many people point to again was his fight 
in June of 2023 against Sergei Deverenchenko, the man who is always giving the house fighters the best of what he has. In that fight, we saw Deverenchenko go down from a body shot in the 12th round, but prior to going down, he battled Mungia evenly to the degree, again, that many people thought that he either earned a draw or should have got the nod. So, the Mexican Arturo Gotti, Jaime Munguia, I call him the human bobblehead because his head is always being snapped back with punches by his opponents, is going to find himself in the ring, possibly now, with Canelo, whose record of 60 and two, with two draws and 39 KOs. This could be a changing of the guard type fight because Canelo, who after vowing not to face a Mexican fighter is now 33 years of age, but there's not a lot of wear and tear on that 33. There may be wear from him jumping up through weight classes. But Canelo has fought fighters relatively safe. And he has prevailed. His fight against Charlo in September of 2023 saw Charlo not even try to win the fight. Even going down in round seven, Charlo did. At no point in that fight did he go for broke and try to get at Canelo? His previous fight from that is a May fight against John Ryder. And Ryder was down in round five. But he fought tooth and nail. He just didn't have the type of power to handle Canelo. But Ryder fought valiantly and bled all over the ring. It was a Rocky-like performance for Ryder which earned him his fight against Jaime Munguia. But the fight that many people look to was Canelo's May 2022 battle against Dimitri Bilbo. A cherry pick gone wrong, they said, whereas he tried to move up to challenge WBA light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bilbo and lost a unanimous decision. Although the judges' scorecards told a different story, sweeping the early rounds for Canelo, which was really preposterous because Dimitri won rounds all throughout this fight. But they decided not to rob him. Interesting. But Canelo decided not to rematch. Further interesting. Is it no wonder that out of his two losses now, Canelo has not faced the men who conquered him in rematches, Bivol or Floyd Mayweather Jr. Now we know why Floyd, Floyd was 37, 38 years old when he took on Canelo. And Canelo was much bigger even though Floyd was a superior boxer, he was winding down. And Canelo was thought to be the heir apparent. But then he stumbled in other fights. And that's where things really got questionable for him. Because if you can box slickly, you can give Canelo trouble. So there were fights where Canelo began to really make outlandish requests. The fight against Arislandi Lara in July of 2014, a split decision victory, no rematch. The fight where he fought right after that in May of 2015, James Kirkland, He stopped Kirkland in three rounds in a brutal fashion, but Kirkland wasn't allowed to have his main stay and corner person in Ann Wolf train him for that fight. 
There were contract stipulations. There were weight and rehydration clauses, something that would come a part of what Canelo would do going forward. So when he took on the lights of, likes of Miguel Cotto in November of 2015, similar circumstances, rehydration, weight clauses, Amir Khan, who was outboxing Canelo magnificently until he was not, got KO'd in six rounds in a KO that was very devastating, highlight reel material. And after that, he basically went on a low tier bash of fighters like Liam Smith and Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. The first fight against Gennady Golovkin was a split decision draw. That came in September of 2017 but we could see the games being played, the games, the games, the games. And let's not forget he popping dirty. The Rocky Fieldings, the Daniel Jacobs who followed, men who were willing to give it in to Canelo, Callum Smith, Avni Yildirim, Billy Joe Saunders, all of these men didn't represent the type of challenge that one would see like men who he's being accused of avoiding, David Benavidez Jr. You see, Canelo is man that has fought his own way and the sanctioning bodies have allowed him to have his way. Again, not much fair play when you're talking about what goes down with this man. But here we are. He's walked away from PBC because he couldn't get his way. And he's going to go elsewhere, maybe to DAZN, who will give him his way. Just glad to have him in the house. But we won't get to see the best of the matches. Because they're going to pacify. And in a recent interview, Canelo's own trainer, Eddie Reynoso, stated that these are going to be the last few years of Canelo's life in the ring. And we have to work as hard as we can to protect where he is in the sport. That means not take the risk, but take the bag. Yeah. So how do you feel about that, people? That he's openly saying, screw you, I'll do what I want to do. But what about the other contenders who V for an opportunity to fight for a world title? Though he holds all the trinkets, should he not be stripped for not facing them? There are several number one contenders because he has four belts and he's not facing any of them. And Jaime Munguia is not a world champion fighter at 168 pounds. He's what I would define as a perennial contender. And any of those number one mandatories would do away with Munguia easily. But what do you think? You see, at the end of the day, Boxing is a corrupt sport. And Canelo has been allowed to do exactly what Canelo wants to do. And sooner or later, hopefully he goes away. But if he sticks around long enough, he'll get his turn. This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and Liberated Perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know your thoughts about Canelo walking away with two fights on the table from PBC because he doesn't want to fight the PBC fighters that have legitimate challenge merit like David Benavidez and possibly David Morrell, possibly Christian and Billy. 
Demetrius Andre. What do you think? A rematch with Kayla Plant? Ha. Peace to everyone out there. And everyone, please remain safe.